Welcome back everyone. I'm Santos with Seven Cups Fine Chinese Tea and this is Chris joining me today. Hello. And today we're going to be brewing a green tea by the name of Liwan Guapian or Sunflower Seed Green Tea. Is that correct, Chris? Yep, that's right. Excellent. It also goes by the name Melon Seed um, because of a sort of a mistranslation that's happened along the years. Absolutely, and we're actually going to really touch on that, but uh, just as a rundown, uh, so to, we're going to be brewing our tea. It's going to be a regular glass teapot. We got our water at 195, and we got approximately, is it five or six grams, Chris? Somewhere around there. About five, six grams <laughs> is how we like to do. We like strong cups of tea, mm -hmm. and then with ourselves, green tea being our favorite category. Oh, yeah. Um, but I notice, or if you guys will notice at home, is that we have a couple of different teas uh, that are not green. Oh, yeah. We got our personal everyday teas here that we like to make. Uh, as the kids say, grandpa style. Correct, you know, or the best way to, to brew tea, just to enjoy it thoroughly. You know, at home, Yeah. you know, nothing too fancy. Uh, what are you drinking today, Chris? I'm drinking some tea that you, I know that you are a big fan of, Snow Chrysanthemum. Yeah, I really like that tea. It's actually, I'm getting the smell and yeah. I'm kind of just, mm, I'm enjoying it, <laughs> I can't, can't lie. Yeah, it's really, really unique chrysanthemum. It's sort of like, I, it reminds me a bit of like, like the Navajo tea you've had me try before. Yeah, as a matter of fact, and um, not to not to sidetrack too much on uh -huh. that, but they're actually in the same kind of family. Uh, a lot of the red colors, uh, or rather the color and pigment and the liqueur is a lot different. Uh, traditional Navajo tea that I'm used to is very bright, it's very mm. yellow, it's golden, um, and this one brews up very deep and red, almost amber, um, mm. and that's going to be due to different um, vitamin A content and amino acid content. It's very fascinating. Um, I'm always up to talk about it, but you can always get up and it's tons of fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's delicious. It is. What are you drinking? Uh, I'm having some uh, Golden Buds black tea today. Uh, can't say as to why, but you know, black tea was really calling me. I almost mm -hmm. went for the Snow Chrysanthemum earlier, but I, you know, I have that a lot. <laughs> Pretty, uh, something so, a little different. A little different, something along the line, but uh, the Golden Buds has just enough sweet, enough floral yeah. that it'll it'll get me through without having to brew a strong cup of snow croissant. Ah, it looks yeah. really elegant in that glass too, with the the buds sticking up, floating vertically like that. Oh, absolutely, that's absolutely beautiful. Really tells to the amino acid content and the high quality that went into yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so Chris, our sunflower seed or melon seed green tea. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it? What, what are we What are we gonna expect this year with the new 2021 ah. uh, stock that came in? So what's different about this year is that our uh, sunflower seed green tea is handmade this year, and you can see um, the difference in the way that the leaves look. They're much more wavy. I'll show you here. Uh, instead of that perfect shape, and that comes from the hand frying. Mm -hmm. stuff like this. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the processing steps that go into this tea? It's a very different tea, very, very different than other high-end green teas. Most definitely. It's, it's, it's very uncommon, um, but like our piping hole mm. way, if I may, um, every step that is taken in its processing method um, is reflected in the character and the profile of its flavor. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So essentially for uh, Liuan, um, what really sets it apart right from the beginning is its picking standard. Yes. So uh, whereas a lot of high-end green teas are picked, um, you know, tail into March, uh, very, very early April, this one's be mid to late April, um, and actually uses a tea leaf material uh, that's about the size of your thumb and no sprig I might add yeah and no butt no butt just the tip just the pick it tea off leaf. the side yeah mm -hmm. so it's already against the grain right then and there uh, apart from that you know the 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 tea leaf once it is withered a, a little while roughly about three to five hours give or take mm -hmm. depending on weather conditions um, Yuan is actually Wok fried in an angled wok as compared to most other uh, woks that are used for frying. Usually it'll be just a plain, uh, even Yeah, flat. Wok. For Liuan, 
it'll be at about a 45 uh -huh. degree angle and they'll actually use uh, uh, brushes that they'll use to sweep in the upward motion in order to get that rolling effect that you see in the final product. Yeah, that's what makes it look like a sunflower seed. Mm -hmm. the, the hollow wave, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, don't quite see it too often. Mm -hmm. And then even talking about the processing after the wok frying, it is let to rest for a slight, uh, you know, for, for you know, roughly about an hour or two, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then it's gonna be transferred over and almost piled up in these large bundles on bamboo trays that are very large and flat. Mm -hmm. And between two people mm -hmm. that are very skilled, they have to work in tandem, to use a large barrel shaped kind of a woven bamboo that the basket will sit on and they'll pull it up mm -hmm. and place it over these large, um, it can either be like a large container, very similar to like a like a wok of cast iron, or it can just be a large pile of red hot coals that have not been smothered in white ash. Yeah. This is direct heat. It gets very, very intense. Yeah. You know, glowing red. And it is only let sit for a few seconds before they're basically turned over and mixed. Yeah. For an even uh, roasting process. So they'll mix it and they'll pass it over the fire 60 to 80 times um, to finish that uh, that roasting, that very unique roasting process. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, most definitely. And this, uh, to touch on again, is very unusual for mm -hmm. green tea. High-end green tea is very unusual. Usually for any other styles, direct heat is not very common. Mm -hmm. Use everything to smother in white ash. This is to lower temperature and better control even distribution of temperature. Um, so it's, it's very interesting stuff, very interesting stuff. Um, but before I get sidetracked, Chris, I'm gonna go ahead and start preheating our teapot right. and we'll go ahead and get brewing uh, so y'all can see the fullness of the leaf and, and a lot of the character in the deep green. Uh, yes. of the leaves character as well. And uh, the, the brood leaves are very iconic. You can see those short, chubby little leaves in there. It's fun to watch open up. You know what's actually really interesting, Chris, if I can sidetrack as well? Uh, <clears throat> the deep color, actually, um, and for, for Yuan, because our uh, general manager, uh, Andrew McNeil, um, actually wrote a article on a blog mm, mm -hmm. um, that you can find online at sunnycups.com uh, where it talks about the almost anti-establishment yeah. uh, style of uh, making this tea. He called it the punk rock of tea. <laughs> it, and, and it really is, it really <laughs> is, it really is. No, I'm actually gonna give it a little bit of a sniff. I haven't had the new one. Have you had it? No, I haven't either. Brand new. By all means, you take it away first. Oh, Let me know what you think. let's see. I'm excited. Hmm. Is it really good new already? Yeah, it's very different uh, from the last tea we did. The last tea we did was uh, typing. You definitely pick up more on the roasting. Yeah. There's there's definitely a, a higher roasted quality. What are some of the characteristics in the aroma of Yuan that you're that you're picking up on so well, far? To me, I, it's very savory right off the bat. Mm, mm -hmm. um, and not quite like nutty like Dragon Well, but it does have a sort of like a little bit almost like sesame seed kind of smell to it. Interesting. I was gonna say. Um, uh, if you don't mind, uh -huh. uh, I'm almost reminded of uh, like roasted pumpkin seed. Oh yeah, you know, I can the, absolutely. The see freshness, that. the greenness, um, but the roasted characteristic of that 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 intense roasting yeah. method, I think, is probably what is reminding me of of roasted pumpkin uh -huh. uh, seed. Um, but that doesn't necessarily it'll uh, doesn't necessarily mean that'll carry over into the Fusion, so right, but uh, what actually makes it pretty interesting um, because most folks, as far as 
mature full tea leaves, uh, folks can tend to associate that uh, picking standard or tea leaf material with uh, tea that is essentially very robust, very rich. In some cases, right. it's stringent or bitter, but Liyuan is totally right. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't encompass uh, the astringency, the bitterness that one may expect in green tea like this. Right, it's um, what makes it really, really strange and really unique. Uh, it's it's very smooth and uh, has all the the quality that you'd expect in a high end green tea. Yeah, we'll probably go ahead and brew this little guy up. They're opening up pretty well. Wow. Yeah. All right. If you if you like tea with a strong flavor, then you'll like this. I, I'd say this has one of the the biggest like upfront flavors, like right on your tongue right when you drink it, which sometimes will translate to bitterness, but not in this case. Not at all. Not in this case whatsoever. Um, it's very interesting. It almost reminds me subtly of of. Uh, of bamboo, like the actual stalk of a bamboo. Mm. You just get it right off the bat. It's that maturity of the tea yeah. leaf. It's, it's the maturity of the tea leaf and, dare I say, that very intense roasting. Yeah. Is what's really bringing that to the forefront. <clears throat> There's a, uh, it's a little bit difficult to kind of pick apart at first mm -hmm. because of that full bodied uh, profile. There's a stickiness, mm -hmm. and there's a slight uh, sweetness to me. Mm. It reminds me of, uh, for me, my favorite fruit is mango. Oh, uh huh. But I don't, I don't feel. I tend to eat the whole thing. Oh, with the, with the so the fibrous, skin. yeah, the huh. fibrous, vegetal, huh. almost that hearty character of of of. of um, Fruits and vegetables like that is, is kind of that I'm being uh, I'm uh, reminded of, uh, or even like the skin of a grape, the high antioxidant mm. content. That's not bitter, but it does have a strong character. To yes. It. Yeah, I'd say with the aftertaste, there's a little sweetness, but other than floral, it's got more of like a fresh feeling. Fresh feeling. How so, Chris? If you don't mind me asking. Almost like the same feeling that you get when you eat like mint or something like that. Like Ooh, when you breathe in. You're very right. Like uh, it's not the freshness of the leaf, but almost the freshness of the stalk, the stem. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I agree. I still, you know, maybe it's maybe it's kind of a. Uh, a generic description, but it's still the roasted pumpkin seed. Yeah, is still what I'm coming back to. Yeah, I can see that. It's got a gnarly flavor, in a way of it being full in your face, and to quote uh, Andrew's uh, blog uh -huh. about this same tea. It's very, it's very, where most other green teas are very Bach, Liu One stands out as the clash. Oh. You know, it's very hard hitting, it's in your face, a lot yeah. is going on, uh, but you love it all the same. Oh yeah. So if you, if you have like a, a tendency to enjoy your tea strong, mm -hmm. Liu One is definitely going to be the one for oh, you. Oh yeah. The sunflower seed green tea is definitely going to be the one for you. Hmm. It's toned down a bit. Hmm. You know what? You're actually really right. You're very right. That's very interesting. I'm picking up on more flavors, like underneath that initial punch. Correct. Correct. I agree. So. What you got? Similar to a lot of other green teas as well. <clears throat> One thing I'm picking up on on the second infusion is less 
direct roasted characteristic, less bamboo, less uh, uh, roasted uh, pumpkin seed, mm. but now I'm getting sweeter. I'm, and sweeter I'm almost too. reminded of the Mengding Malfunk's character of fried chestnut oh. or roasted chestnut. It's 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 definitely it has lightened up a bit. Mm -hmm. There's still that full bodied flavor and character, uh, but mm. you know I'm, I'm almost reminded of uh, instead of uh, instead of the chestnut, I'm reminded of uh, walnuts. Walnuts. Mm -hmm. And dare I say even roasted walnut. Oh. Something deeper. But when when you kind of have some. Uh, Air or oxygen, when you kind of like breathe in a little mm -hmm. bit, even during the, even when you're talking, it sweetens up. Yeah, yeah, it turns sweet like it, when the air hits it. It's 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 it's, it's fascinating. I, I, I don't know which green tea I'm gonna choose this year for for the favorite. I know it's, there's so it's many definitely up there. You know what it reminds me of? Mm. Like reeds. <laughs> yeah, that's the ticket. That I agree. That's a, I yes, 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 yes. That's a perfect description. The hardier, like a hardy read. I, I don't know why. It, I don't know why it took me so long to figure it out. At least how I interpret the flavor. Yeah. It's it's hearty. It's full. It has a delicate sweetness. It's almost like when you catch, um, it's like in spring if you're ever walking by a river or a lake, when you smell a lot of riverbank kind of growth, mm. like reeds or mm -hmm. even like uh, uh, you know like elites. You know, it might be a little bit of an oddball description, mm. um, but it's a it's a. Uh, it's a red stalk, small leaf plant um, that is edible. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know. I don't know the English translation or the name, <laughs> but it has a soft spot in my childhood and my heart. Uh -huh. we, you know, we'd season them up and, and eat it straight like that. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's that delicious. Good. But be careful with the with the little tiny white flowers, huh? Because they they are as hot. You know, at least back then, they, they had a spicy kick to it. Interesting. It reminded me of jalapenos or Ohio. Wow. Yeah. So be aware. But also, if you can't identify it, if you don't know it, oh, don't, don't eat it. it. Don't <laughs> eat it. Just be safe. Um, I'm sure you can get it somewhere on the market. Oh, yeah, That's probably. Very safe. You yeah. Out. You know, be careful. Um, but I still go out and. You find some? I'll find some. I can't have the experience. I, I can't help it. It's too good. Uh, but the, that kind of that aroma, mm. it's almost you know the, the fresh water, the crisp vegetal uh, character of like almost new growth reed mm -hmm. that you were saying the reed aspect or like cattail. Yeah, you, know, you get a waft of of what it smells like, and this is definitely definitely in, in that kind of category as yeah. far as the description. The sunflower seed green tea really embodies the complexity and the mm. layered flavors that tea can offer. Yeah. And like you said, people from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. different palates, different experiences mm -hmm. can all find something different within tea as a whole. And it makes for a truly enjoyable experience, even if it's by yourself, with somebody yeah. that you know, friends, family. It's 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 very interesting to to be able to pick it apart and see what you really like about it. Yeah, you know, um, I'm actually gonna go back in for another one. Excuse me. <laughs> well, since uh, there's so many different kinds of flavors that can be picked out, uh, if you've tried this tea or any other green tea, please let us know your experience in the comment section below and. Um, and also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, yeah. things of the nature. Um, let us know about your experiences. Let us know what you want to see in future videos uh, to help us kind of break it down so we can ultimately uh, tailor the videos to you, you guys, what you yeah. guys want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But until then, 
I think we're just gonna sit and enjoy tea. We hope you enjoy our tea. Keep brewing this one. It keeps giving. So most definitely, most definitely. So thank you for joining us at Seven Cups Fine Chinese Tea. Yeah. Thank you. Take care.